The Jim Total War here, and today we're doing another tier list using Tier Maker, this time covering the uh, Tomb Kings, which these guys play very differently to every other race in this game, because they don't pay any recruit costs or any upkeep costs, and so the main factor as to whether any of these units is good or not is largely based on their supply limit, uh, because apart from two units in their roster, every single one of these units has some kind of cap or some kind of limitation to how many you can get, and that largely impacts how effective they are. Now there's some units that perform terribly and you should never recruit, and there's some units that you should just try to get as many of as possible, even if they're not necessarily great fighters. The way the Tomb Kings play is very differently. Okay, so um, we're going to be basing this based on Legendary Difficulty Campaign, very high battle difficulty, uh, no mods, no multiplayer. Now I want to make a distinction as to why these are always based on very hard battle difficulty. For one thing, the channel has always been about playing this game on the highest difficulty, and I get that people who play on normal battle difficulty sometimes feel left out. And just to address that um, briefly, you got to keep in mind that if something is good on very hard battle difficulty, it's pretty much the same on lower difficulties. What lower difficulties mean and why I don't focus on it is because normal battle difficulty is way more forgiving for trashier units uh, because they don't have to deal with the melee cheats. The balancing on the battle difficulty is really bad, right? So I just feel like making a tier list based on normal battle difficulty is of no real use because you really can't fail uh, comparatively on normal battle difficulty compared to very high. It's just way more valuable to know which units you're actually going to get value out of um, on the higher difficulties than on the lower ones. Because on the lower difficulties, it's like you could just do whatever you want and you'll be fine, more or less. And if you're not fine, just, just keep playing the game and keep making mistakes and you'll learn. You don't need guides to learn how to play on normal battle difficulty. You just need to play the game. But on very hard battle difficulty, things can get very confusing very quickly because it's very unclear about which units actually perform well. And that's why I focus on very hard battle difficulty. So if you're one of those people who play on normal battle difficulty, totally fine. And sorry that these videos videos aren't more helpful to you, but you can take this and apply it to lower difficulties and it will still work. It's not like suddenly on easy difficulty, melee infantry is the meta. Melee infantry is not the meta on any battle difficulty. It's just that melee infantry is more forgiving on lower battle difficulties. That's all it is, as an example. Anyway, let's uh, let's move on to this. First thing we're going to talk about is actually melee infantry, as always. All right, so... First unit that we're going to talk about are the units that we have unlimited supply of, the Skeleton Spears and the Skeleton Warriors. Um, there is a clear definition for me which one we should be getting over the other. I don't recommend having a mix of both. Uh, since there's no capacities, no recruitment costs, you don't have to have 50-50. My recommendation is go for the Skeleton Spear variant and the Skeleton Warrior is complete trash. And I'll qualify that because... It largely comes down to the role that they're going to have on the battlefield as a support unit. Because on very hard battle difficulty, you cannot rely on melee infantry to deliver the, the decisive winning blow. So what melee infantry ends up becoming uh, their role is delaying factors. Their job is to hold the line long enough for other better units to actually dish out damage. Now... Skeleton Warriors have higher melee attack than Skeleton war uh, skeleton Spears, but they have significantly lower melee defense, and they also don't have anti-infantry, and this one here has anti-large, meaning if you're going up against even a small number of cavalry or monsters, this guy here is going to dish out way more damage than this one. And the fact that this one here has higher melee attack accounts for so very little because of the extra 20% melee defense that enemy infantry are going to have, so both of these units are not going to dish out damage, but this one here is going to hold the line a lot better, which is far more valuable to you, tactically speaking. Next up is the Nehekara Warriors. Now, I really don't like this unit because I consider it kind of an upgraded version of the, um, the Skeleton Warrior, and since I consider this one a trash version, I would kind of put this one here in the trash as well. However, I might be a little bit more lenient to it because it is an upgraded version. It doesn't have an upkeep cost. You are going to want to build that building, and maybe, maybe they are slightly more useful, slightly, than, than these guys if you're going up against dwarfs or something that have primarily infantry um, rather than large units. 
Now, the reason why I don't like them is because they're considered damage dealers, but because they actually have very low melee attack and they have lower entity numbers than the, the other skeletons, they, if we have a look actually at, uh, at them, they've got 120 compared to 160. And, you know, 32 melee attack is... It's okay. It says they're anti-infantry as well, but they actually don't have a bonus versus infantry. So... They they have less health. They're just not as good as holding the line. So 22 melee defense compared to, if we have a look at Skeleton Spears, 30 melee defense. All these guys here, 22 melee defense. So like I said, they're kind of an upgraded version of the Skeleton Warriors. I just don't think they do a great job, but I'll leave them at C tier. My recommendation is skip over them. But if you really want to get them for a damage dealer and you'd have nothing else, then you could probably make an excuse to get them. If you, got, if you get enough of them, maybe they can handle it. Okay, next up are the Tomb Guard. Now... Comparing Tomb Guard to Great Swords is a bit silly because Great Swords will obviously dump all over a Tomb Guard unit. They're vastly better units. However, the benefit of Tomb Guard is that they're free uh, and that you just have to get enough capacity of them. And if we have a look at the situation with building things on the campaign map, um, it's very convenient to build loads of royal barracks because there's only a few buildings that max out at tier 3 and building the economic building it doesn't provide a whole lot of value and there's no point making tons and tons of money if you don't actually need to pay for your upkeep of your troops so I tend to build loads and loads of these and end up having huge capacities because for one thing that's also where your skeleton arches are coming from as well so I'm actually going to put the the tomb guard at A tier because the way that I use them and that I've found them effective is that I get so many of them that I just don't need to recruit these guys anymore. They're still not individually going to be able to take on a great sword unit, but I just drown the enemy in bones. So if, if they're bringing one army, I bring two because the Tomb Kings can do that. You can use your numbers to your advantage. The way that I think is effective with the Tomb Kings is increase your capacity for certain units. And this is definitely a unit that I would recommend increasing capacity of as much as possible because, you know, you've got the anti large variant here. And this one here, you know, they're just, it's just a way better variant of these two here. And I tend to get loads of them. These are the, these are the best melee infantry that Tomb Kings have to offer. And you know what? If you spam them, you can do a good job with them. They also do reasonably well when paired with the Law of Nehekara. But eh, I don't really like Law of Nehekara. Anyway, uh, there's also this unit here, which is a melee infantry unit. But I'm going to save all of Ark and the Black's vampire units till like a separate section in the back. So we'll, we'll come back to that. Okay, that's all the melee infantry, I believe. So let's move on to archers. Uh, maybe I should just make it infantry rather than melee and missile because, um, yeah, I'll just make it infantry because there's only one missile unit, uh, the Skeleton Archer, um, which I'm going to put at A tier. It's not a good archer unit, like it's not going to be able to beat a high elf archer, but in the early stages of the campaign, it's your go-to unit. It's the only unit that's actually going to dish out any kind of damage in the early game. You need to pair up, if you're going to play on the higher difficulties, recruit these guys here, just to fill up capacity, but build your armies around this unit here because it's you can build it at tier one for every every tier one military building you get four additional of them. These are your damage dealers, and you just need to get as many of them as you can because these guys here they're going to dish out more damage than any other unit that you can recruit in the early game. So you rely very heavily on them in the late campaign. You'll probably rely less heavily on them, uh, but you'll end up having hundreds of hundreds of capacity of them by that point. But you know, not a good archer unit, necessarily, but really convenient, and kind of your only choice at tier 1. Alright, so that's the infantry done. Let's move on now to cavalry, because there's actually quite a lot of cavalry here. Okay, so let's start with the... Actually, I'm going to need to check the... Um, I think that's the skeleton horseman, and that's the Nehekara horseman there. Okay, now, um, I don't usually prioritize building the, the cavalry building that much. Sometimes I do. Um, but I would usually only build it in major settlements. If you were going to build it in minor settlements, you can only get up to Nehekara Horsemen. Uh, whereas if you go up the top, you can eventually get to ne uh, Necropolis Knights. Now, I have built entire armies made out of Skeleton Horsemen. Or just cut, thrown in a couple of them here and there. And you can make them work. They're actually not that bad. So I'm going to put this one here at C tier. And this one here also at... 
I mean, cavalry don't perform well in Warhammer 2, but I mean, they don't have any upkeep. And if you lose them, it's like, you, it's really not a big deal. They don't take long to recruit. You just need to build the building. I'm, I'm leaning towards putting this one at B tier, right? It's, <laughs> I mean, in a, in a list of full crap units, it's like, it's still kind of crap, but it's, it can work. It can work. You just have to work very hard. Okay, then let's move on to the skeleton horse archer here. Uh, this one here, I don't really prioritize getting them. They're not anywhere near as good as the uh, the regular archers. I'm going to put them at B tier. Um, the biggest problem that they have is that they just don't have that much ammunition, which means they don't have as much killing power. Um, and then once they run out of ammo, they're really squishy. So sending them into melee, they just die really quickly. So it's very difficult to sort of get a lot of value out of them. But, you know, about comparable to these other units here. Okay, let's uh, let's talk about uh, chariot units here. So we've got the regular chariot. Now, these are okay as a tier 1 unit. And there's kind of like the only tier 1 chariot unit in the game, I think. Even the green skin, um, uh, what's it called? Snotly pump wagons don't get them at tier 1. So if we just come back over here and have a quick look. Uh, coming from this building here, which occasionally I build. I don't prioritize it. In terms of priorities, I usually go priority 1 to royal barracks. Priority 2 for um, uh, money. And then if there's still a build slot left over, as in if I don't need to build like a, um, a resource building, then I'll prioritize this one here. Because Screaming Skull Catapults, and we'll get to that a bit later, uh, they're quite good. So Skeleton Chariots. Usually when I'm playing a Cetra, like this is buildings already built, and I will recruit some Skeleton Chariots. Uh, they're okay in the early stages of the campaign, but they're extremely squishy. I'm going to put it at uh, B tier in the early game, and same thing with this one here, B tier. They're... They're okay. I definitely wouldn't put them in A tier. I've tried a full chariot spam before, and it's just too hard to make it work because you just have to really just just constantly keep charging in and out, and they just get stuck. And because they've got eight entities rather than uh, it's eight. Wait, hang on, isn't it twelve? Let me just double check that. Yeah, twelve actually. Um, they have three times more entities than um, most other chariots in the game, where they're like four. Um, it makes each individual chariot actually kind of weak. So it, it would actually be more beneficial to have lower entity numbers for each of them to be like like have four entities in a chariot unit. It makes it easier to ensure that they're actually going to survive the battle in a way. So it's kind of weird how more entities actually equal a weaker unit. Uh, with that one. But yeah, I'm going to put both of them at B. Obviously, this one here is, is a better unit because it's got essentially the same stats but has an archer unit. But because you have to build the building up to tier 2, it performs at a tier 2 level, uh, B ranked in terms of that. Uh, moving on with more cavalry, there are the Necropolis Knights. Now, Necropolis Knights are like, they're cavalry, but they're also constructs. So I'm going to put them in the cavalry section because they perform more like a cavalry than a construct, but they are sort of like a hybrid between the two. Hang on, which is which? Let me just because there's... Okay, the darker one is Halberds. Okay. Just need to make note of that. So th this one's the tier 4 variant, and this one's the tier 5. Okay. So in terms of um, how effective these guys are, I would actually put both of them at B, B tier. Um, I have recruited these guys in my armies, and I have tried like really boosting them with a, with a dedicated army of them. And you can make it work with these units, but they're terrible in sieges, and they're kind of slow. So, as I've said before, cavalry units that have speed of 66 or anything under 75, I really don't value that much because cavalry's main advantage is speed. Um, these guys do hit pretty hard, but they can be a bit... They get stuck quite easily because they just don't have that speed uh, to sort of get them out of combat. This is why Bretonian cavalry do so well, because all of them are quite fast. Uh, and one of the main benefits to these guys' cavalry here, these ones, is that they do actually have that above 75 speed, which is really useful. Uh, having less than that with cavalry, I just think it's a big weakness, which is why I'm going to put it at B tier. It's the same tier as these guys here, um, except for this one. Um, just... It's just, um, yeah, just the speed that slows them down too much. I mean, you can heal them with Necrotex as well, so that helps. I uh, can't revive entities unless you use uh, <laughs> the passive for um, the Nehekara Law. But, you know, it's it's just difficult to make them work. I'd say they're a B tier unit. All right, what other category should we use? I think we'll just move on to Constructs now. Oh, hang on. No, no, no. Hang on. Um, what, what are, where are we going to put... That's not a construct. I don't know where to put carrion. I'll just put it in here as misc. <laughs> All right, carrion. Trash. 
the the most useless unit in the uh, the Tomb King roster. It just doesn't do a very good job. It's worse than bats. Um, they also suffer from having to be capacity. They're a tier two unit, and um, their main role is really to like take out enemy artillery. Um, and they're kind of bad at it as that as well because they're just such bad fighters. You only get 24 entities in it, whereas bats get 60. They die super quickly. It's just such a piece of crap unit. Uh, even pinning down enemy archer units, in my opinion, you're actually better off hiring a you know a skeleton spearman and just wasting enemy ammunition than trying to get this one here to actually dish out any kind of damage because they get shot super quickly. They just can't dish out any damage. I've I've tried creating a spam of them before. It was just so bad so yeah just just not a good unit there all right let's move on now to constructs okay let's start with ushabti okay all right so the the tier three variant the melee one i'm gonna put that at b tier you can make a doom stack of them it's not very good um but you can do it but the ushabti with great bow uh being a tier four unit uh, this one here is much more viable. I wouldn't put it under the Doomstack category. It wouldn't prioritize this at all uh, for your Doomstacks. But, you know, since the Tomb Kings rely around building up your capacities, I do build this building. And when I've got enough capacity, it's good to have them in an emergency to have... Like, a, a, a Shabti army is going to perform better, on average, than a melee infantry-based army. Because um, the way that I build my armies as a Tomb Kings is I specialize each of my lords. And if I show you in this campaign here, because this was actually a full map completion. If I show you how I did some of these armies, I specialized each of my, my armies with one particular unit type and um, had them support each other. So some of these have funny names, but they will have... See, there's the, my Necropolis Knight one. Uh, there's my Ushabti one. It, it, you know, it, it did it did okay. You know, there's my Tomb Guard army. Uh, I tried to make it work with chariots. Uh, I don't think this one really saw much uh, combat. Uh, I got loads of, of those ones. But yeah, I specialize each of my army. But I try to make use of as much of the roster as possible. Uh, with some exceptions. Some exceptions. So, I do use these units. I just don't prioritize them as like the top tier ones to get like right away next up is the sepulchral stalker now i am not a huge fan of this one uh it does stalk which is which is quite useful um but i think that they're quite slow so for a, like a like a like a kind of cavalry unit i wouldn't even classify them as cavalry let me just go back over here and um look over them so the sepulchral stalker here um 16 entities their speed is 50 for a cavalry unit that's not acceptable so I find that this one here is okay, I guess, but I, I very rarely build my armies around them at all. So I'm actually going to put it at C tier. Um, I just don't think they have a lot of value. They just got better options as the Tomb Kings. So recruit them if you like them. I just I just find I just don't get a lot of value out of them whenever I get them. Okay, like they, they've got low amount of ammunition. They don't do a great job in melee. You send them up against something that is large and they kind of lose in most cases. Uh, they're big, so infantry sort of demolish them really quickly. Just just not a great unit. All right, uh, let's talk about... Yeah, let's talk about Tomb Scorpions. I love them. That's my the Tomb Stack unit that I prioritize as much as possible. Um, this is I made a video a long time ago saying the best unit to recruit in every race and it wasn't, in that particular video, it wasn't the Tomb Scorpion. But if I was to remake that video, it would be the Tomb Scorpion. Because the Tomb Scorpion is so versatile because of its animation. Its stats don't seem like that much. But because if you have them in a blob and they just like have like a churning pit of scorpions, it just makes everything stun locked constantly. And everything just has such a hard time killing it. Any sort of artillery shooting at it, it just can't hit them as long as they're in a fighting animation because they're so fastly moving around. Their animation is their strength. Their only weakness in that regard is that sometimes they get stuck in walls during sieges. But if you're going to recruit a spam of them, you're usually only going to get like one or two of them stuck at most. The most I ever had stuck was three, and that sucks, but it's not the end of the world. Um, later on in the campaign, you're also able to recruit them in like one turn quite easily, uh, globally. And the great thing about them is that uh, when you do decide to go get uh, Tomb Scorpions, being a tier 4 unit, it increases the capacity of them by two. So you can get more of them faster for other tier 4 units so for other tier 4 stuff if we have a look this building here gives you two, so you need a whole you need a 
provincial capital in order to get any of them, right? But you need fewer provincial capitals to get more than other tier 4 stuff. So, looking at that, in the Ushabti Great Bow, you only get one. Uh, the Necropolis Knight, you only get one. Bone Giant, you only get one. This one here gives you two, which means it's basically double the value. You can get a spam of them going really quickly. Very high priority building to get because you'll get more of them. It's such a high value unit. So definitely doom stackable this one. I got great results out of them. My biggest concern with them is just don't send them up against too much high elves. Um, that was probably the, the, the most difficult fights I had with them. They were able to handle it, but too many high elves can be a problem. And too many single entities can be a problem for them as well. They they do very well against Skaven. Skaven are like an all-round great faction, right? But they suck against, um, uh, uh, what's it called, Tomb Scorpion spam because they can't pin them down and all of their like warp fire throwers and, and globities and all that kind of stuff that the AO recruit just end up getting tons of friendly fire. They cast spells and just miss. Warp Lightning can't hit them. They, it, they're just really bad and they can't catch them as well because they're relatively fast. Just such an excellent unit, really. What My favorite in the Tomb King roster. Okay, next up, Bone Giants. I'm actually going to put this one at C tier because I used to like them a fair bit and I've just been liking them less and less as time goes on. I definitely build that building because it's got other benefits. I build Having Canopic Jars, uh, Public Order in adjacent provinces, really good uh, for legendary difficulty. Lord Recrank, uh, Recruit Rank plus one. Um, all of the stuff is really good. So I definitely build the building. It's just that this unit always lets me down. Um, and for a tier 4 unit, it really does. Uh, you know, since I do recruit, you know what, I think it belongs in B tier because it is a convenient unit to recruit, and maybe the, the trick is just not spamming them, having them support other armies, they can do a good job, because they're not a great artillery unit, they're not a great melee unit, they do need some support, but, you know, a unit of bone giants is definitely going to be better than a unit of, like, spearmen so I, I think b tier is probably where it's going to be but i did really nearly ball the line put it at c tier just because they they do let me down quite often but it's a very convenient unit to recruit all right next up let's talk about the cambrian war sphinx love them absolutely love them the only problem with them is that it is uh, a tier 5 unit and you only increase the capacity of them by one every time you you build this building um, and it is a very expensive building to build, but since they don't require um, upkeep and they don't have recruitment cost, uh, they do take three turns to recruit, which is a bit of a pain. Um, but that otherwise, that's not really a problem for them. Getting loads of them is the, is the main problem, I suppose. Uh, Necrotex can help in that regard a little bit, getting the Sphinx Carver uh, recruit trait, and then they get a skill in their recruit tree, uh, in the skill tree that also increases capacity for them, if you want. Uh, they can be quite useful. So of the three, uh, top uh, tier 5 constructs. I think I actually like the um, the Cambrian War Sphinx the best, just because their animation with they like jump around and stuff, it actually makes them quite quite really good against infantry because they can punch through enemy lines and they've got this attack animation where they just keep charging sometimes they stop they can be a little bit derpy but just a really good unit and an excellent mount for pretty much every single Tomb King Lord um, then we've got the Necro Sphinx also doom stackable really good unit it just comes down to capacity i try to get as many of them as i can in the campaign but you're just going to be limited based on capacity uh but otherwise really good unit anti-large variant having a mix of these could work as well uh building your armies around them totally works i, I usually keep these kind of armies separate um but uh, sorry the uh, tomb scorpion and the the war sphinx ones are separate but these guys here really good units uh you know for the tomb kings which are primarily trash Okay, then we've got the the Hyro Titan here. Now, of the tier 5 ones, I would say that this is the one that I prioritize the least, and it largely comes down to the fact that it's the slowest. It does increase your magic reserves by a fair bit, so having a spam of them in an army and putting one wizard in there can give that wizard superhuman levels of, um, of magic reserves, which is really useful because that's essentially a, a greater arcane conduit for each one. And it does stack. So for each one of them that's there, you get more and more and more. So it's really, really useful if you've got a wizard. Um, but the unit on its own is not a great fighter. But that extra support is very useful. So I am borderlining putting it on A, but it is definitely a doom stackable unit. It's just that of the, the three tier five um, constructs, I prioritize it the least. All right, now let's move on to artillery. So we've got the uh, the Screaming Skull Catapult. This is a good unit, honestly. I don't have a problem with it. I just don't focus on it too much. Uh, it's, the, it's a tier three catapult unit. 
it's okay. You get, how many do you get with each one? It's like one, right? Yeah, it takes a bit to increase your capacity of them. So they're kind of inconvenient to get. Um, so I'm going to put it at B tier. I think they're kind of reliable. They just, you just don't get a lot of them. And I think what you really want to be increasing capacities of, of stuff that's going to provide you lots of value much more quickly. Um, yeah, if it was plus two, I'd probably put it at A, but I think it belongs in, in B tier. Then we've got the, the, um, the, um, the, what's it called? The Casket of Souls. Uh, this one here, because it doesn't require a building to recruit, it requires a right to get another one of. I'm actually going to put it at A tier because this is an excellent artillery piece that you can get early on, but you can only get at most one of them every 15 turns, but you don't need any buildings for it, which is really useful. However, this one here has a recruit cost of 5,000. You can technically re reduce the cost of your rights eventually down to zero, but it's actually a massive pain in the ass to do that, and I don't really want to go into how to do that now. I didn't bother doing this at all in my campaign. Now, it's totally fine to... To, to pay the 5,000 gold for it, because a lot of the other military buildings cost about that much anyway, but it also has other benefits, uh, like the Lord Recruit Rank plus 3 is really useful, Recruit Rank plus 2 for all units. You're not just purchasing the Casket of Souls, you're also getting this other stuff here for 5 turns. Now, a thing to note about this is that do not do this right if you've if you've got an unrecruited Casket of Souls, because it doesn't add another one. Every time you do this, you need to recruit the Casket of Souls. Just keep that in mind, or else you're wasting the uh, the right. So, I think it's a good unit. Then finally, we've got Arkham the Black's troops. So, Bats, I would put that as trash, because it, it basically has the same role as Carrion, so it's kind of redundant. It is slightly better than Carrion, but considering you need an entire military building <laughs> to get it, um, I, I just wouldn't bother. I just wouldn't bother with it. Uh, the Crypt Ghoul, uh, they're a better infantry unit than these guys here. So in the early game, they're actually quite useful. So I'm actually going to put it at B tier. I think it's, I think they perform. They don't have as much melee defense, but they got way more killing power than Nehekara warriors. So I think that's acceptable there. Uh, Dire Wolves also at B tier. Uh, they're just like a. a Good for running enemy units down, basically, but <laughs> you wouldn't want them to uh, go into melee with anything in a prolonged state. They're just too squishy. Uh, and then we've got the Hex Race. Hex Race for uh, Ark in the Black is extremely good because you get them at Tier 3. It's just a matter of capacity. And if you own the... Bla uh, the um, the uh, What's it called? Uh, Nagashazar, you get an extra 100 capacity of them. And since you don't have to pay upkeep for them, by all means get them. This is a high value unit, especially since it, you can just build the recruit building in a minor settlement, and then if you can get Nagashazar, uh, get a hundred of these, that fills up five of your armies uh, full of uh, hex rays, which is way better than a lot of this other crap that you can get down here. So that's a really good option for Ark in the Black. Now you've probably been wondering, oh, Legend, I never see you do that. Yeah, that's because by the time you do that, it's fucking turn 150 that's the only problem with it because getting the gashes are to, to tier 5 it takes a long time for the tomb kings but once you do that it's it's really good i just haven't played an arc in the black campaign up until that point but uh hex race are very good so there we have the tomb king roster where they have very few trash units and a lot of garbage uh, sorry a lot of like mediocre units that you will fill your armies with uh and then a select number of arm uh, units up the very top that are like pristine like really good units that shouldn't let you down unless you're like really bad at the game so that's my uh tier list for the uh the tomb kings let me know in the comments below what you think of it um whether you agree or disagree i'm curious to know your thoughts there's definitely some ones here that i'm a little bit iffy about especially the sepulchral stalkers um let me know specifically about that one because i know some people be like oh they're good what are you talking about i just i just didn't get good results out of them in my campaigns, and so I just stopped recruiting them. Got better results out of other ones. Anyway, that's it in this one. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.